thanks uh, Rosie for inviting me to provide these opening <coughs> remarks. When she invited me to think a little bit about uh, on a day that we wanted to call contrapuntal uh, encounters, art as resistance, almost immediately uh, thought presented uh, itself to me, I must talk about uh, art is resistance. And Udi talked about that, mentioned it uh, last night uh, before or after the, um, the splendid film that, um, that was screened. Um, in this notion of art is resistance, uh, I think um, Said used contrapuntal not as a metaphor, but particularly captured this notion of art is resistance. But here perhaps using the meaning of resistance, not so much as implying reaction, opposition, or even refu refusal. Uh, resistance for Said, as it appears many times in his writings, was more like against the grain when it mattered. What does it mean to act against the grain when it mattered? So it's not a question of the act itself, but also its timing and spacing. Um, and what I'd like to suggest this morning in, in few minutes that I have is that Said found in counterpoint a meaning of resistance that is at once artistic and intellectual, aesthetic and political. But I don't want to make this particular point in general. I want to focus on a particular artist that uh, Said was especially impressed by and kept coming back to in interpreting uh, his music, articulating this notion of art is resistance, at least implicitly. And that artist was Glenn Gould, a Toronto pianist. For those of you who are not familiar with uh, his art. Um, Glenn Gould was a renowned and interpreter of the keyboard music of Johann Sebastian Bach. And his intellectual virtuosity and capacity to express polyphonic sound of especially Bach's music were re remarkable. But Glenn Gould is also known for a singularly inexplicable act in the history of music, for he quit public performances of piano in 1964 and produced only studio music until his death in 1982. And I think that this particular act had a special impression on Said in articulating his notion of contrapuntal, working through counterpoint, but arriving at a notion of art is resistance. And at the same time, arriving at a notion as art is resistance he defined increasingly intellectual activity equivalent, not identical, to that notion of art is resistance. Now, Said wrote in 1982 about his first encounter with Glenn Gould in a 1961 concert, and that was three years before Gould abandoned concert performance, the significance of which I will revisit. There, Said recounts how Gould was so utterly demanding of himself, the composer and other performers, in bringing out the simultaneity of sounds with endless inventiveness. This then reminded Said, to quote, in counterpoint, a melody is always in the process of being repeated by one or another voice. The result is horizontal rather than vertical music. Any series of notes is thus capable of an infinite set of transformations as the series or melody or subject is taken up first by one voice, then by another. The voice is always continuing to sound against as well as with all the others. There is already, I think, a meaning of resistance in this understanding of uh, counterpoint. To Said, it was Gould who understood this contrapuntal vision of art as resistance with an infinite demand to speak against as well as with other voices. Although in this early essay, Said gives wonderful images of Gould and his vision, it is almost 20 years later that he articulates this vision as an intellectual project in an uh, article Glenn Gould 
the virtuoso as intellectual. The shift is here is really important. This is what drew my attention to Said's interest in Gould, in fact. This time, he explicitly presents Gould's practice of counterpoint as simultaneously an artistic and intellectual practice, a practice of a contrapuntal resistance. In this essay, Said goes deeper into Gould's studio performances, and he reads his decision to quit concert performances along with Walter Benjamin and Theodore Adorno, without claiming that Gould had read them, but as though Gould was communicating something what Said said discursive as well as musical simultaneously. Then Said turns to the issue of what was inventive about Gould's interpretation of Bach through this lens. Now, I don't have either the capacity or skills to communicate what Said thinks Gould finds in Bach. That requires really not only larger time to devote, but someone who has the capacity to be able to technical knowledge uh, to do that. But nonetheless, Said is helpful. He says, to put it simply, the kind of Bach that Gould, cho Gould chose to play was a composer whose thinking compositions provided an opportunity for the thinking. Intellectual virtuoso to try to interpret and invent or revise or rethink in his own way. Each performance becoming an occasion for decisions in terms of tempo, timbre, rhythm, color, tone, phrasing, voice leading, an inflection that never mindlessly or automatically repeat earlier such decisions, but instead go to great lengths to communicate a sense of reinvention or reworking Bach's own contrapuntal works. Said says, again in quote, in enacting it on piano in the studio, the performer, this time Said switches to generalized language. It's as if as though he's not talking about Gould. The performer aligns himself with the composer, not on the consuming public, hence an understanding of the decision to quit public performances, which is impelled by the performance virtuosity to pay attention to the performance, not so much as a passively looked at and heard presentation, but instead as a critical rational activity being intellectually as well as orally and visually transmitted to others. Again, Said's emphasis is on the simultaneity of communication, neither oral nor um, visual nor intellectual alone, but all at once at the same time. And Said also makes wonderful ethnographic comments about how Gould over the years developed a solidarity between technicians, studio engineers, producers to create in the studio a space of creative and inventive um, language. And it is particularly remarkable uh, how could Said make those ethnographically astute remarks without really being exposed to how Gould actually produced uh, that studio-based uh, performances. Obviously, Said had the imaginative capacity to understand how uh, Gould was actually bringing that music into being. There is, of course, there is much to discuss and reflect on this portrayal of contrapuntal practice as artistic and intellectual resistance, not because it says no, but because it affirms an inventive, creative elaboration. What I find in Said's interpretation of Gould's performative act, shifting its sight from the stage to the studio, is precisely a language of resistant thought that is neither repetitive nor submissive to that which it is interpreting. Moreover, that Said heard Gould not only as a musician, but also as a thinker, marks out how to rethink thinking. Said recognized that Gould did not only perform music, but also reflected on music and communicated that via various different genres. Here, in my view, through Said, art does not provide metaphors with which to think, but grounds the very thinking itself with its performativity. 
Now, there are many examples, in my view, in Saeed's subsequent work throughout the 80s and 1990s that this notion of contrapuntal um, performative practice, art is resistance, uh, comes through in various different subjects, which uh, makes me uh, think again on the fact that he wasn't using contrapuntal as a metaphor, but really the ground of uh, thinking. I will just give you one idea, uh, one example, and then um, I will hand it over to uh, Anne, and throughout the day, hopefully, these issues will keep uh, coming back. But in culture and imperialism, for example, when he says, at least it reminds me, this particular interpretation of Gould, quote, the idea of resistance, far from being merely a reaction to imperialism, it is an alternative way of conceiving human history. It is really important to uh, pause and think about that notion of uh, resistance to imperialism is not merely a reaction but invitation to think human history. In this gesture, for example, he was, I can't help but think, he was hold, uh, holding a firm notion of Gould as a performative artist in mind, although in a very different uh, field. Thanks very much, and I'm gonna hand it over to Anne now. <laughs>